If you're wondering why uh, it was a little chilly when we came in, the, uh, there was an air pocket in the uh, heating system, and of course, it stopped the furnace from circulating, so it was cold this morning. So we took care of that, and it's all taken care of, so now we're, hopefully it's getting warmer, and by the time we're ready to leave, it will be at the right temperature. So it's one of those things. Today we're looking at Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 verses 2 through 7, and we are looking at the Prince of Wholeness. I was reading this, and I was looking for the Prince of Peace, and was going to combine or look at our life as finding the Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ, and how that Christ is our peace. But whenever I came across this Prince of Wholeness, and this is from the Message Bible, I thought of it in, in the context that, that, especially in our life, how do we find wholeness, especially at Christmas time? And in light of what has happened for this tragedy in Connecticut, the how can we find wholeness in our life and um, how do we keep from this, this fragmentation that takes, takes part in us? And we are, sometimes we're very complicated individuals and sometimes we're very simple. Uh, I know that I'm simple, but sometimes people are complicated in the way that they, you know, our makeup on what we remember and what we've gone through in our life and how that our lives have been broken into so many, so many different sections by whether it's our, of our own doing or whether it's because of mistakes or uh, other people coming into our life and, and their influence or their pain inflicted on our life. And there's all of these challenges that, that come to us. And how then do we find wholeness? And how do we keep this wholeness in our life, especially at Christmas time? Christmas is a time, and I think whenever we have a tendency to remember. And sometimes it's good that we remember. We remember when we, our childhood, but sometimes perhaps our childhood is not very good. Sometimes maybe the Christmas season was not a great time in our life. And how then do we allow ourselves not to keep the past from re visiting the present, the Prince of Wholeness. The people who walked in darkness, Isaiah says, the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. For those who lived in the land of deep shadows, light, sunbursts of light. You repopulated the nation. You expanded its joy. Oh, they're so glad in your presence. Festival joy, the joy of great celebration. Searching rich gifts, warm greetings, sharing, excuse me, rich gifts and warm greetings, the abuse of oppressors and cruelty of tyrants, all their whips and cudgels and curses. I had to look up what a cudgel was. Do you know what a cudgel is? Pardon? Club? A whooping stick, yeah? <laughs> Well, when I, when, I tried to, when I tried to find it, it came up with Roman armor. Uh, so a shield, sword, you, you could buy all of these cudgels online. So it's, I, I'm, it's either a, a whooping stick, uh, the, the Roman shields or, or whatever. At this time in Isaiah, there, I don't think there was the Roman Empire, but it was the, the shields and the armament of, of, of the other oppressing army. So it's talking about their whips and their armament and their curses that they would bring against you, is gone, It's done away with. A deliverance as surprising, sudden as Gideon's old victory over Midian. The boots of all those invading troops, along with their shirts soaked in innocent blood, will be piled in a heap and burned, a fire that will burn for days. For a child has been born for us, the gift of a son for us. He'll take over the running of the world. His name will be Amazing Counselor. Strong God, Eternal Father, Prince of Wholeness, Prince of Peace in the King James. His ruling authority will grow, and there will be no limits to the wholeness he brings. He'll rule over historic David throne, over the promised kingdom. He'll put the kingdom on a firm footing and keep it going, with fair dealing and right living, beginning now and lasting always. The zeal of God of the uh, the zeal of God of the angel armies will do all of this. So wholeness, peace, will 
We wonder when will it get here. Well, will, will, will the peace of Christmas come when the shopping is done? <laughs> um, how about the decorating? Jack, uh, we are driving around last night, and usually I put lots of lights in the front of our house and so on. I haven't done a lot of decorating this year uh, outside. And uh, so Jack says, well, Grandpa, when are you going to put the lights up? <laughs> you know, it's like, I got two wreaths, Jack. There's two wreaths out there, you know. Um, but it's not what we've done in the past. So, um, so when are you going to get your decorating? Will, will peace and wholeness come when the decorating's done? Or how about whenever all the presents are wrapped? Or whenever the family gets in? Or whenever the cooking is done? Or when the presents are under the tree and then they are opened. <laughs> Will there finally be peace at Christmas? <laughs> Maybe it's after Wednesday night and we, don't, we go caroling and we won't have to sing that loud. <laughs> How about next week after the Christmas program and we don't have to worry about the kids embarrassing us. It's the fun of it, you know. You can always remember those special situations. Family things, church things. How about at work? Have you had your Christmas parties yet? The community celebration. You know, the whole, the whole idea of Christmas. And whenever we think of this, sometimes cr- Christmas is so fractured. It's so broken apart in, in so many different segments. There is, you know, there's the, our work life. There's our friends, there's our family, there's church, there's all of these different places that we have Christmas and we have the celebration. And so peace at Christmas, you know, did I get you all stressed out? (laughs) Thinking about all these things that we have to get done for Christmas. Will family get in or will they not get in? Will the weather be bad? Will it snow? Oh, let it snow, let... No, 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 don't sing that song, you know. (laughs) We have family coming, they're traveling and... You understand, right? Fractured, Christmas, peace. Well, you've probably heard of the serenity prayer, okay? Which was made famous by Reinhold Niebuhr. I think that's how you pronounce his name. Well, many times we've, we've not, we, I never knew there was more to it. That most of what we know from the serenity prayer is just the first third. There's more to the serenity prayer. And I'm sure that we've all heard, God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and wisdom to know the difference. There's more. Did you know that? Living one day at a time. This is the further on in the prayer. Living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardship as the, path, as the pathway to peace, Taking as he did, speaking of Christ, this sinful world as it is, not as I would have it, trusting that he will make all things right if I surrender to his will, that I may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with him forever in the next. The path to the peace of God comes through living and enjoying our life with Christ one day at a time. We can't go back and change the past, and we can't go forward and know what the future will be. We have to live at peace with God and with ourselves in this moment, accepting what we cannot change instead of worrying about it. Trusting in God's loving care and wisdom and surrendering to his purpose and plan for our life. See, God has a plan and he has a purpose, but we can only see today. And when life is all over and we're standing in heaven and we're looking back, we will see how it all has fit together. You know, I think of that tapestry thing. You know, you look underneath a tapestry and you can't see a pattern, but you look at it from the top, you see the whole pattern and what the design is. And in our life, God has a purpose and a plan, and we're busy looking at it from the underneath, and God is saying to us, don't worry, it's all perfectly coming together. So come to me, Jesus says, all you who are weary and carry a heavy burden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you, because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your soul. Wholeness at Christmas. 
coming to Christ and finding rest for our soul. Come to me, Jesus says, just as the shepherds did. The angels made the declarations and the shepherd responded to them. The wise men, they saw the star and they followed the star and they came to Jesus. And all of us are called, all of us are called to come to Christ. At Christmas and every day of our life, there is a desire in our heart to know more of God. There is a desire there and all of us are called to come to Jesus. All of you, especially those who are weary, those who carry heavy burdens, you know, and we think of our own lives and, and perhaps our nation and perhaps, even, oh, of course, the, 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 the town in which these horrendous crimes, heavy burdens, feeling uneasy, feeling the uneasiness of loneliness, the unnecessary stress of Christmas, unnecessary pain and emptiness that we can't do enough or never have enough or won't be able to give enough. Somehow trying to make sense of life and the, 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 the changes that have come in our life over the past years, trying to see how they all fit together and make sense of it, that we have enough of these situations that we can look at and say, wow, did it really happen that way? People in our personal life without, <laughs> you know, these people who've come into our life and have challenged us without adding to that the perplexities of our world and the killing of these children and the craziness that has come there. How that people without God, without feelings of empathy, how that they can even act in such a way. We, we, it's so beyond what we can ever imagine. It's nothing, you know, to call them... <sighs> you know, the darkness that that per- perpetrates these, these actions. Um, the darkness that people have to find themselves in to be able to commit such crimes. You know, there's, there's no clue of what <laughs> they will create and what they will think of in their own lives. But for the victims, I, I think of it as there, there's little to say that could penetrate the shock of what has happened and such a loss to their families. I mean, there can be no Christmas. When, you know, no matter how many other children they have, it will be so difficult not to focus on this horrendous loss. And, you know, we, we can't imagine, unless you have experienced, and I, we've never experienced it in our life, but I've spoken with so many people that have experienced losses at death of children at this particular time of the year and how it has influenced them and how that has had an effect and how many years it has taken to somehow find some sense of peace over what has taken place with the death of their child. And there is no way that we can understand it. There's no way that we can put ourselves in that perspective. Even if it has happened to us, it's still different for each family and with each loss. And we think of such horrendous acts like this and we wonder where did all how could all this come about and you know one psychologist on the on the tv said at some point he he thought that the the individual who committed these crimes had a problem with his his mother because he killed her first and then he then because his mother was a teacher he went and killed the classroom and he's saying that perhaps there was some connection to his own childhood that had brought about this 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 actions of his and I, and I look at that in our own lives and say what actions of our past continue to haunt us in a way that we continue to destroy the present see here's a person who goes off the deep end and takes the life of his family and takes the life of of students and these children who had no part in anything that was part of his life. But somehow he felt to eradicate all of that would, whatever I don't know is thinking. But I do know that in our lives, there are things of our past that haunt us to the point that we will destroy our present. And the present has no connection to our past. And that's why we look at the wholeness of Christmas has come that Christ at Christmas, he is the, he is the, he is the, he is the Prince of Peace. 
we have the peace of God in our hearts. And the peace of God is that we don't understand all of the things that have happened to us. We don't understand all of the reasoning behind what has happened, even of our own decisions. We can blame others. We can blame ourselves. But that's not the peace of God is a way that we look at our life and find a way to allow forgiveness to come. The Prince of Peace. Peace on earth. Peace with our conscience. Peace with our actions. Peace with our life so that we do not continue to destroy the present, so that we do not continue to destroy the things of value in the present over something that has happened in our own life in the past. There is peace with others, which is called reconciliation. God turns us into peacemakers. Now, we give, he gives you the desire and then the ability and then the power. It isn't something that we are able to do on our own. It's like being able to be a Christian without Christ. It doesn't happen. You can't be a Christian without Christ. It takes the power of Christ, the teachings of Christ. It takes the Spirit of God to work in your life. It isn't a list of do's and don'ts. It's a relationship with Jesus Christ that challenges and changes. If it's just another list of do's and don'ts, we're just, we'll be just adding more to the fire of I can't do it. <laughs> I can't make it happen. I've tried and I've failed. You see, God gives you the desire. And that desire is the basis for our motivation and desire for our ability to open our lives to change, to reconcile with the people in your life with whom you've had conflict. You know, the Scriptures call us to come to an agreement with the people we've had conflict with. Come to me, all you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. The Christ child, this babe born in a manger, came to bring this about in our life. He came to give us peace with ourselves, weary and heavy laden, heavy burdened. There are people who carry the burdens of their life with them. They wear their heart on their shirt sleeve. <laughs> You, ever, you know, people who do that? And if they're very sensitive to their life and they're sensitive about all of the things that come and go, the Bible says, I will give you rest. The wholeness at Christmas is found in Christ. And when Christ comes into our lives, one of the first areas where, he, where we see the difference is in our relationships, in our wholeness. There is a difference in our relationship with God that we don't see God as the one who is, well, you know, he's up there. <laughs> you know, do you ever, I, I, didn't, I, I, may, I won't do it next week, but um, I remember one year, I did the, the, the Christmas carol. <clears throat> you ready for this? You better watch out. You better not pout. I'm going to tell you why. Santa Claus is watching you. He knows when you've been... What, what? He knows when you've been what? He knows if you've been good or bad. What else does he know? He knows when you're sleeping. <laughs> What else does he know? He knows when you're awake. Your grades. <laughs> he knows your grades in school, and he will cancel Christmas if you don't pass because we're taking all the presents back. Do you, do you, I mean, and, and, and we, we, we say that and we sing about that every He knows when you are sleeping. He knows when you're awake. He knows if you've been bad or good. So be good for goodness sake. What's wrong with you? <laughs> you better be good for goodness sake. <laughs> Talk about a messed up society. Even the guy who brings his presence watches over us and we can't, we can't even sleep without him knowing it. <laughs> but you see... <laughs> 
we, we look at God and we say that he is up there marking out our list and you know he's checking it twice and if we've been naughty to hell with you. <laughs> That's it. You don't get no, 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 no presents, you're going to hell. And you know, it's the way it goes. You don't have a chance. But what if I clean up my act? Well, we're going to go what the little cartoon we're watching with Jackson is um, Mickey's Christmas and the, the three guys, the three little nephews are bad and they've got to get to the North Pole to write their name on the, on the nice list so they get presents. <laughs> so they fly to the North Pole to get, to get their name on the nice list. You know, so somehow we got to get our names on the nice list so we go to heaven. <laughs> No wonder we'll mess up. You know. So you find that God will give us rest and he'll give us wholeness. And when Christ comes into our life, the first area he has, the first area we work on is our relationships. Now, peace at Christmas, to work for peace means you actively seek to end conflicts. You know, and it's sad that, I guess, you know, there's, see, this is the thing we don't give ourselves permission we don't give ourselves permission to have bad days. Now, I don't have any, so Rhonda doesn't have to worry. But, <laughs> yeah, you don't know me very well. <laughs> but, you see, we have to give ourselves permission to have bad days. How many have had bad days in your life? How many have ever had bad days when other people were around? They're the ones who brought it out. I was doing perfectly well until you showed up. <laughs> Still having a bad day. Yeah. But how about whenever you're cooking and you get, I'm not done, I'm not ready for you to show up yet. Why you get your hair an half hour early and you want me to stop cooking and I can't stop cooking because I got all this stuff to get ready. Well, they won't even sit down and talk to me. They're too busy cooking. Getting ready for everybody else and, <laughs> and family conflicts. All right. <laughs> but, you know, sometimes it's just, it's just easier to let it fly, let it roll. Because we understand ourselves and we understand personalities and we understand pressure and we understand Christmas. We understand. And so, therefore, why couldn't they be more understanding? I don't know. But can we be more understanding? And because Christ is in our life, we ask God to help us become more understanding, more at peace with ourselves, and recognize, you know what? You know, it's like the Christmas play with the kids. It's going to be fine. But what if they make mistakes? So? The earth's not going to come to a, you know, the world's not going to come to an end. It's just the play. And we practice and we do our thing, and we will have fun, and we will enjoy the message, and we will are to enjoy ourselves and our families and the people we love. You see, reconciliation, when relationships break down, we offer forgiveness to those who hurt us. You pass on to others the same grace that God has shown to you. You know, I still remember, I, you, know, you know, I've had had opportunities to have disagreements with individuals. And um, sometimes, you know, one individual that I'm thinking of, I, I spoke to them. And I spoke to them many times. And one time we were t- just lined up that we were the only two at this one place. And I went up to him and, you know, I said, you know, we've, we've had our dif- disagreements. And it's, you know, it's all right. We have them. But it's always my desire, my personality that... You know, at least we, you know, let go of the, 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 the bad things and, you know, kind of start over again and, and, you know, do this whole thing again. And I s- said, well, why don't we just, you know, part friends and able to disagree? And I, went, I, took, I said, why don't we just shake on it? And he says, well, I'd rather not. <laughs> okay. That was his choice. Reconciliation, it's a lot like the serenity prayer. We only know the first part. We don't know the rest. That's why many are reluctant to reconcile the strained relationships because they don't understand the difference between forgiveness and trust, the difference between reconciliation and resolution. 
You see, reconciliation ends the hostility. You know, in the Middle East, there is the, what is it, the ceasefire. Well, they're never going to resolve until they start reconciling. Stop the fighting. See, it's not the same. Reconciliation ends hostility, but it's not the same as resolution. Reconciliation ends the hostility that we find in our minds and our hearts that continues to make up bombs and throw them at the other individual. Your peace at Christmas, wholeness at Christmas, reminds us that Christ has come to end the conflict of sin in our own lives and in our relationship with God. To end the conflict, there is no longer conflict. There is now, therefore, no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. There's no longer a conflict in our soul. Why? Because we, our first approach is forgiveness. It doesn't mean that we're going to restore relationships. It means that we're not going to blow the people up. (laughs) And while we're in the process of making bombs to blow people up, we blow up ourselves. Because we never get the bombs there. We're the ones, what do you want? (laughs) You know? And they're not even the ones that we're talking to. It's what's going on in our own minds. Reconciliation. I, I was wondering, why on earth... You know, I was thinking of the Prince of Peace and how that we would find peace with God and this whole scenario in our life at Christmas. And I saw this, this, this idea of wholeness. And this is, this is what came of this idea of wholeness, especially at Christmas. There is a wholeness in our life that we have to find in Christ and in his principles. And we find that this, this individual who killed innocents and killed children that in a very, very remote, dim way, we are sometimes like that. Not that, but we are like that destructiveness inside of us that destroys ourselves and destroys others because of something that has happened that we've never allowed forgiveness to be part of our life. Wholeness. Reconcile, reconciliation, ends hostility. But we can still disagree. It doesn't mean that we agree. It means that I'm no longer going to focus on your pain or on my pain. You see, two people can be opposite ends of the problem and never, never agree. But reconciliation is I have the right to what I know and experience and feel. And before God, I'm going to stand before God and and I have to give account of my life and I'm not going to allow situations in life, whether they are intentional or unintentional, I'm not going to allow them to destroy my life now. Father, forgive me of my sins. If I have sinned against you in thought and word and deed, forgive me and allow that forgiveness to be outward from me towards others. And I extend to them my forgiveness. And if they say, no thanks, that's their concern, not mine. I am with doing what is right in the sight of God. What has God had done with us? I have done everything. Christ came to forgive us of our sins. He died upon the cross for the sins of the world. The sins, as far as God is concerned, are forgiven. And God says, I forgive you. And we say, no thanks. I don't need forgiveness. (laughs) The end of life, he will say to us, I don't know you. Wow. You see, this is the challenge that Christ gives to us, especially Christ at Christmas and the wholeness that we are to find in him. There is a big difference between forgiveness and trust. We offer forgiveness the same way God offers forgiveness to us. But you know what? Our life is something that we build in trust. Trust isn't something we give. Trust is something that is earned. 
I forgive them, but I wouldn't trust them. You know, someone who has stolen from you comes up and asks for, for money. And you say, well, I forgive you for your loan, what you took from me the last time, but don't think I'm going to give you any more money. Well, you're not a Christian. No. <laughs> I know the difference between forgiveness and trust. I forgive you for your offense, but I do not trust you because you haven't changed your life. Give me evidence that you have changed your life and that will come over time. Then we will talk about trust. You see, and this is like the serenity prayer. We have, we have parts of it that we know, but we don't know the rest of it. You know, we, have, we see people's actions and, and we try to piece it all together as to why they would do what they do and think what they think. And all. You can't answer for other people. We can only answer for ourselves. And I am the only one that's going to stand before God for me. (laughs) And you're the only one who's going to stand before God for you. And it isn't that this is something that we should be afraid of. It is something that we should welcome. Because let a man examine his heart. Let us look at our life at this point, where I am. And am I destroying myself and destroying people around me? Am I hurting innocent people? Because of pains of long ago. Allow God to forgive us and forgive those. God is the righteous judge. He will judge those people for what they have done or not done. For the pains they have given or not given. For the life they have lived or not lived. They are in God's hands. I am in God's hands. Let God live through me now. Let this Christmas be my celebration of Christ in me. And I am whole. My wholeness is in Christ. And I, do not des- I, and I desire to give what Christ has given to me. Do not desire to hurt or cut people off or pay back. You didn't give to me. I'm not giving to you. We give, doesn't matter, there's no strings attached. I give because I want to give. That's it. No strings attached. No conditions. Just I desire to share. See, that takes away the burden, that takes away the thinking of it, that takes away the indifference of it. It takes... It takes the idea that Jesus loved us. He loved the world so much that he gave of himself. For what reason? So that we could have eternal life. Well, it's not based upon what I do. Hey, God, I've, kept, I've done my part. You do your part. You owe me. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's like kids. I'm your child. Give me what I want. <laughs> <laughs> and that's okay, you know, there are kids. But that's different, you know, we know the difference. So, if we rehearse and re-replay in our minds what happened, we allow the hurt to be there all over again. And every time it comes up, we forgive. If it comes up a thousand times, we forgive. If it comes up a hundred thousand times, we forgive. Why? Because we've got to forgive and let it go. And how many times do we have to forgive until it no longer hurts? Sometimes it's something we have to do every day. Sometimes it's something we have to do once a year because we're reminded of it once a year. But every time the pain comes up, forgive them and let it go because I'm not going to allow the sins of the past, the hurts of the past, to destroy my present relationships with other people. Resentment is self-destructive. It always hurts you the most. Resentment is that which prolongs our own pain. So never allow the past to interfere with the present. Peace at Christmas. Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace, the Lord of life, the Lord of all. Look at what Christ has given us. He has given us wholeness. He has given us completeness. He's given us very special gifts. The gift of himself, the gift of love, the gift of forgiveness. The gift of being you. He created you in his image, 
He put his giftings inside of you. And now life causes us to bring these things to the surface and allow his love to form these giftings and share them with other people. If you sacrificed all you had to buy me a priceless and personalized Christmas gift and I never took the time to unwrap it and open it, how would you feel? You'd be disappointed. You'd be hurt and angry at my callous rejection of your generosity. And for me, the gift would be worthless if I left it wrapped and sitting in the corner. There would be zero benefit to me. It is astounding that so many people have celebrated Christmas every year of their lives without ever having to open their greatest and most expensive Christmas gift. Jesus Christ is God's Christmas gift to you. Wrapped up in Jesus are all the benefits and blessings. In Jesus, your past is forgiven. You get a purpose for living. You get a home in heaven. Celebrate Christmas by opening the best gift of all, the gift of Jesus Christ, who loves us and forgives us. Amen? Let's stand. So now that we have solved all the problems of the world in a 30-minute segment, <laughs> unwrap the greatest gift. But, you know, I, 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 you know, I was fortunate. I grew up in a... In a you know, my mother and father were wonderful people. My grandmother was wonderful, I mean, you know, godly individuals. I remember, um, you know, we never had much. I had always, when I was little, um, we always had to have Christmas celebration, you know, Christmas gifts, Christmas Eve, because we had to do chores in the morning. <laughs> Cows had to be milked in the morning, and it was always a pain to go to the barn and milk cows and come back in. Yeah, you know, get cleaned up and do gifts and all that stuff, and you know, because you always want to do the chores in the barn. Yeah. So Santa Claus always came uh, Christmas Eve. So my brothers would take me in a car and take me out the road somewhere, and I would be looking up in the sky, and they'd be saying, Oh, he's over there, he's over there. I still remember him. I'm running from side to side looking up in the sky. Oh, you missed him, he's over there, you know. And they had me running on back and forth in the car, you know. And, when we got home, been there, you know. I got my present, my one present. Great, great Christmas, you know, and it was. And, but I always had, always had, always had love and all those things. And in our lives, some of us have not been blessed with that. The wholeness of Christmas is in Christ. Let us create that wholeness for our families, our children, our grandchildren, for the people around us. Let us create that wholeness. And it begins in us, not in them. It begins with us. And it may not work well this year, this year but it doesn't matter. It begins. And it keeps coming and it keeps coming and, it, and we keep building that trust over years. Father, thank you that the trust that we have in you has been built over centuries. The promises that have come to us have come through your prophets and come through Christ. God, let us, let your word sink into our lives. Let your word, O God, refresh us from the inside out. Cleanse us, O God, and renew a right spirit within us. If we have sinned in thought, word, or deed, we ask your forgiveness. We ask your love, O God, to heal our hearts and our woundedness. Let this Christmas season be a a wholeness, O Lord, that is inside of us, in our relationships with others, our relationship with you. Bless us, O Lord, Lord, for those families in that community that is in grief. Only you, O God, can bring peace and hope in a time of such great sorrow. God, I pray that you will touch their lives. You will touch their lives and comfort those 
who are, in, who are mourning. We pray, Lord, for your blessing and your healing to be upon them. Help us, O Lord, as a community and a nation. Help us, O Lord, to be your hand extended to those in need around us. We pray in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And everyone said, Amen. God bless you. God bless you.